So this session is uh, mainly for a uh, general interaction. So we will have Professor Sethi, myself and somebody from the workshop management team. So if you have any concerns, suggestions or questions regarding the lectures, we will be able to take it. We will also have feedback form where you can actually give detailed feedback, but this is just uh, if we can answer to it, we will answer it now. Please go ahead. First of all, I must congratulate IIT Bombay for this mammoth effort of teaching the teachers. Thank you. And making them communicate crisply to the students. If the teachers are good, then students automatically will be able to do better. So far as the <laughs> classes are concerned, the modus operandi was fantastic. All of us were made to go onto Moodle and submit and interact online, get a feel of what we mean by the term technical communication and later on based on that experience we have interacted online here in this week. Thanks a lot. I wish you all the best and all the participants so that we can make India one step higher in terms of technical education. Thanks a lot. Good afternoon sir. Hello, good afternoon madam. I am Shipra. I am the, I'm the remote center coordinator here. Okay. Uh, sir, you had told us that uh, any educational course should be coupled with communication skills. So, uh, how to incorporate communication skills exercises in our subject, like engineering subject? Some principles can be incorporated, not all principles can be incorporated in everything. One thing that uh, we many students lack here is because English is not being our native language. Written and oral communication in English is uh, uh, lacking severely. So, when you give problems to uh, students, uh, if you give them problems that are not just mathematical or uh, just uh, choice answers, but actually ask them to describe it. Okay, so describe what is the question they are trying to answer and ask them to think and little bit in English and express that even if that is mistake and if you can correct them, I think that will be the first step. And they have to of course uh, read more, not just uh, uh, one textbook, but many textbooks and I think that will in, in a sense that is something which is common to all courses. Uh, but many other aspects of uh, what we discussed here may not be uh, applicable to all courses but certainly a couple of them can be used. Okay, thank you very much. Sir, I have one question to you, if you don't mind. Yes, please. So when you were taking up uh, abstract writing, there was one question that came up to my mind and that was normally what happens is whenever any uh, conference is announced in any of the colleges and whenever the papers are called from us, what we do is we write the abstract first and then we uh, start about writing the paper. And since the abstract is already submitted to the college to be printed in the souvenir, and suppose, like, is it very much uh, compulsory on our part to stick to that ab abstract? Because many a times we come, uh, you know, we are faced with, with this problem that the abstract that we've already submitted, probably the research work that we try to conduct later on. Uh, is slightly, uh, you know, it has some variations from the abstract that we have submitted. So, is it advisable to uh, do this or uh, is it very much because once the abstract has gone to the college to be printed, nothing can be done? This is uh, very commonly encountered not only in local inst uh, conferences, even international conferences. And I think the community also recognizes that. Now, the initial submission of abstract is only to filter out uh, from 100 to say 10 or so. So, once they actually filter that out, uh, usually they give a second call for resubmission of abstract very close to the um, uh, actual event. So, if they are asked call for abstracts uh, 5 months ahead, they might uh, give you 1 month ahead before they actually print it. Now, even if they do not do it, uh, I think it is okay. So long as the broad area is the same, uh, if the result, uh, if it has taken a different uh, this one, I think you should, uh, even if you are going to change your title, you should just intimate your uh, organizers that 
uh, there has been some minor changes uh, which is acceptable but most conferences do allow you to update the abstract not to a totally different one but uh, something within the area to some variations in the results i think that is uh, quite acceptable uh, given that uh, that actually it's in a sense good because it you actually think what is going to happen and you write it that's very important when you do a research you actually uh, plan in a way that okay if i do this i might get this result but when you do it you might get something else which is okay so long as uh, you stick to the broad topic it's fine thank you so much sir thank, thank you, you. Uh, let's go on to the next college uh, jawaharlal nehru college yeah, good afternoon sir good afternoon sir thank you on behalf of our entire jnnc team to you and your entire team support and also your colleagues thank you yeah one question i had that is uh, when will the results be announced and uh, the certificate issuing period uh, we will take about week or two uh, we want to give a chance for some people who have missed uh, some of the assignments because the we could not give a second chance for the quizzes we are going to give uh, an, another activity which uh, i will announce towards the end of this once everybody is here and we'll also put it up in uh, iit bombay x and moodle so that you will uh, so expect about two weeks from now uh, but certainly we are going to give you a format for provisional certificates which you can uh, give you can sign it and give that that's not official the uh, you i mean the workshop coordinators can sign it and uh, give so that can be done immediately the team here says that it will take about uh, three to four weeks because there's printing and uh, dispatching all those things is there so uh, just to finalize to uh, announce it online we will take about two weeks and then uh, the final dispatch of the certificates might take about three weeks okay, okay. thank you sir a uh, knowledge institute of technology from salem so good afternoon sir i am audible sir so do you have any broad questions or comments sir basically uh, i have a single doubt sir uh, based upon the flip classroom uh, what we have followed sir uh, one important thing uh, what i encounter is that we are given the all these kinds of materials uh, questions uh, a month before uh, but i personally feel this that uh, i was not uh, able to recall all those things so if in that case it will be useful if we give the presentation etc uh, one day before uh, covering a topic so that it will be easy for us to take a homework can we refresh and then coming to next class it will be uh, very much in, uh, useful to recall all those things yeah your suggestion is good uh, but see that is how a normal flipped classroom has to happen so uh, let me repeat what uh, was suggested by knowledge institute uh they had suggested instead of uh, having the lectures uh, one month ahead and come for the workshop you can do it uh, one day ahead the reason it was done with so much even in spite of having given a one week span for somebody to view it many people could not view it and uh, it will be li little difficult if we have to do it just one day so everybody uh, say today i post all the video lectures which are going to come tomorrow you will hardly have any time to go home and view that videos so usually people are able to what we have noticed is most of you are able to view the videos during the college time uh, maybe after lectures between 6 to 5:30 uh, 4:30 to 6:30 hardly many people can go home and view the videos so given that constraint it is little difficult for us to do uh, both the things just one day before okay so of course within college environment when you want to do flip classroom maybe it's okay because uh, we can try different other models this is the first time we are trying this maybe we can try another model where uh, we do uh, lectures and then in the same week we hold the interaction so let us see but that that would mean that many people traveling for long distances If once we have lot more remote centers we will be able to do the way actual flip classrooms are held that i we have the uh, video lectures followed by interaction the same week thank you for the suggestion we'll uh, we'll work on some model like that yes sir thank you sir sir we have one more doubt as sir yeah please go ahead so good afternoon sir 
Hello. I have some questions with you. I have some questions with you, sir. First, normally we are telling men or women are equal uh, like this. We are telling, sir. Yeah. But if there is any age difference between men and women or gender difference, means at the time uh, the communication is going to failure. How can we rectify it, sir? For so, example, men you... age is higher than woman age means he won't accept anything many times. At the time, what we can do, sir? See, okay, I think there is something what is desirable. I mean, if uh, we have uh, what uh, Professor Parthasarathy has given in his talk is what is uh, accepted uh, practice which is fair. Now, how do you get to it is now you are aware you have to inculcate it if you are able to tell your class students and they are they are all in the same age group right. So, they, they should be able to appreciate that first. So, uh, we cannot accept all expect all your colleagues to do that uh, overnight or something, but hopefully your class students will be able to appreciate slowly and uh, given this era of internet and uh, awareness about what is uh, a fair culture, uh, I guess they will be more receptive and we will have uh, uh, a better workplace uh, when your students come to take the pedestal. Okay sir, thank you sir. One more question sir. Yeah. I have written something in my article, if I produce same thing in my another article means it is called uh, plagiarism, sir? Uh, in a sense it is because say let us say you are publishing in one place, in one journal, uh, you do not own the copyright to that. It is uh, most of the cases about 80 to 90 percent of the cases the copyright is owned by the journal publisher. So, which means that you have to take the uh, journal publisher's permission to use it. Okay. The copyright you have actually transferred the right to copy the content from there to the publisher. Only the publisher can reproduce the some things in two different places, you cannot reproduce. Again it is not considered that way it is not considered a good practice. Suppose say you are describing an experiment, you are describing methodology in one uh, paper and you are using the same methodology for some other experiment. Now you might think that I am doing the same thing, let me just uh, do it. Now, just let me just write the same thing, that is not right. If it is already there, simply cite that, say that this has been done, reported in detail in that paper and you can just list down two points, but never take the complete material. One it is uh, violation, legally wrong because it is violating copyright, other it is ethically wrong because uh, you are not actually restating and writing it in a different way. Okay sir, next question is. I have got some idea from my uh, friends or others uh, for my article. If I quoted that, uh, that things in work side, means it is called as a plagiarism, sir. No, no. Plagiarism is copying of something which is expressed already, not somebody that is saying. When you say something that is not been expressed in a, a tangible form, you have to have the expression in a tangible form tangible form could be a uh, printed material, a recorded video or uh, audio or something of that sort. They are all tangible form. If you reproduce a tangible form exactly as is, it is called plagiarism. Now, if somebody gives you an idea over cup of coffee and you use it, that is not plagiarism. It may be unethical not to give credit to that person, but that is not plagiarism for sure. You might want to give an acknowledgement. You do not need to give authorship to that person. But if you want to give credit in acknowledgement, uh, you should say helpful discussions from my uh, from this person. Uh, I, I acknowledge helpful discussions from this person and suggestion, initial suggestion of this idea, which is good enough. You do not need to actually put their authorship and not putting anywhere their name is uh, uh, ethically wrong. Okay, sir. My final question is which is the best method to understand the data easily? A by chart or bar chart or data for table format? So, uh, the main points that was discussed in that uh, uh, presentation two days back is it depends on the uh, kind of data, whether it is continuous, it is discrete or it cannot be compared. So, you cannot even put it in a graph form only table. So, it is very specific. So, if you actually go or take a look at this presentation here in that uh, 
a video you will see different uh, scenarios where you have to use different kind of uh, data presentation okay thank you margaret engineering college from alwar sir the workshop organized by you is very informative for us we have learned a lot uh, from this workshop we learned how to read uh, uh, read a paper how to write the abstract of a paper especially especially the session conducted by the rathi sir is very informative thank you thank you very much so where do you think we can improve i think uh, if uh, such workshop from the discipline specific if you conduct the uh, such workshop from the discipline uh, discipline specific a uh, discipline perspective sir so uh, there are uh, in fact um, courses though we don't have lot many there are some courses in computer science uh, mechanical engineering which is thermodynamics and even next week we have courses on uh, engineering physics so there are technical courses also being held hopefully you will see many more courses uh, in a, in a year or two so uh, what we'd like to know is what is your feeling of the quality of interaction you think it was uh, good enough sir the quality of interaction is very good sir okay and it is very informative sir so uh, uh, do you have technical communication skills in your college do you how do you propose to use this uh, uh, course for your college sir uh, we can use this course uh, uh, in second year onwards sir okay very good so uh, what in the from the contents that you have seen here what are the contents that are common to the course that you are running especially sir uh, communication skill uh, gd interview skills sir these uh, uh, these topic covered by you are very important sir okay and we will use it for the benefit of our students sir okay very good how about the the technical communication part which, which is related to uh, reading writing papers presentation and so on so uh, do you think your research students can use that or you yourself will use that how do you think that is useful to you all sir especially uh, apart from the communication the lecture delivered by you sir just like how to read a paper how to write a paper we can uh, include this in our mtech student we can use this knowledge to guide our mtech students sir okay do you have do you have special courses for mtech students as well yes sir okay we have 3 uh, mtech team sir okay thank you very much